tell us about your new book coming out October. Strong Line of Day, Caitlin Strong, number seven. I know I say wow, this. Wow, seven. I say this every year, but I really mean it this time. I'm, this is the one I'm the most excited about. Oh, cool. Because it's easy. You know, I've written six books with yeah. gunfights and big bad men, and not to give too much away. Hmm. The, the, Caitlin, what she confronts in the end this time, can't be killed by bullets. Oh. And it may oh. not even be human. Ooh. What might it be? So I just had, you know, I've written so many books and so, you know, seven in the series now. Mm -hmm. And you look for ways to keep it fresh. Right, because that must be a challenge for a series to keep it fresh. It's a challenge in two different ways. It's a challenge in terms of the story and the mm -hmm. structure to do it different enough each time to distinguish it from the others, uh -huh. but it's also a challenge with the characters so they don't get stale. Right. Continually giving them emotional challenges they, and crises they must overcome. And, and I think that's what I love about this book, because in both those cases I've done stuff that I haven't done in any of the other books. Yeah. Um, and you know, some, some of it is plot oriented, some of it is yeah. character oriented, but here's the great thing that I love about all, all these Caitlin Strong books, mm -hmm. the emotional core of the books, what's happening to the characters, always ends up tying up tight as a knot with the structural core of the books. Right. You know, and that's why John D. McDonald, who created the, T the Travis McGee series, was once asked to define story by a young writer. And he said, stuff happens to people you care about. Yeah. And every scene I write, I ask myself, Am I fulfilling the McDonald rule? Am I following the McDonald rule? Oh, that's cool. And how long does it take you to write? Like, how long did it take you to write this one? Um, eight weeks first draft. But um, I have this fear all the time mm -hmm. that the book isn't going to be long enough. Right. So I tend to, to pad the beginnings. I tend to put, so, so it started, I ended up with a 660 page book that in three or four days after that, I had cut 80 pages out that uh -huh. I never should have been in to begin with. But there yeah. is this basic insecurity that the book you're writing is not going to be long enough. So it, yeah. it, it's, it, it, I'm obsessive to the point where I wanna, that I use Courier, which is the a huge 12 point font, yeah. just because I love the typewriter look, because that's uh -huh. what I'm from, the, how I grew up. Yeah. But also, it's like I love when I like, can spill a few lines onto the next page, because mm -hmm. it's not the page. Yeah, it's yeah. just the security, because I don't outline. Okay, and, so and to me, the writing of a book is like a marathon, not a sprint. Mm -hmm. And in a marathon, you don't think of mile 26 at mile one, you think of mile two. Right. So I write in 50 page blocks, and I know approximately 100 pages ahead where I'm going. Whereas some writers, the light bulb goes off and it just spills out of them. Mm -hmm. My process is that it comes a little bit at a time. Oh, okay. So I don't know when I start a book. The best stuff in it is mm -hmm. never there yet. Just mm -hmm. the very general things are in it when I first start out. And then it just starts to flow. In other words, the story emerges organically. I don't impose right. my will on the story. I don't impose my will on the characters. It determines itself where it wants to go and what it wants to be. Yeah. Oh, that's really cool. Well, you know, it's, it's having the confidence to know and trust your characters mm -hmm. that they're going to take you where you need to go and where the story needs to go. And again, if you care about them, mm -hmm. so there's this, if I don't know what's going to happen next in a thriller mm -hmm. when I'm writing, how is you as the re how can you as the reader know right. what's going to happen next? Yeah, and that's you want to keep them on their toes. Nothing toast. is worse than something that feels like it's formulaic, right. like like everything is just where it's supposed to be. Now my books, we all write mm -hmm. to some formula, uh -huh. but I like to surprise myself, and yeah. if I'm surprising myself, I'm surprising you. Yeah, yeah. And what what made you initially create the character Caitlin Strong? <laughs> Shameless desire to sell copies because the head of sales at my company, who just retired, said women buy 75% of books and thrillers are the most popular genre now, but there's no thriller hero who's a woman, right. a female Jack Reacher. So right at that yeah. table that day I said female Texas Ranger <laughs> because special forces doesn't work right. because it, you can't sell it. But being a Texas Ranger is all about the gun. It's mm -hmm. all about the rep. It's all about the creed. It's yeah. all about the badge. And everyone went, oh my God. And I said, and let's name her Caitlin Strong. 
Yeah, so, that's a good name. Well, I, like I, it. I believe in writing. Some of the best creative decisions you make are as a, as a result of business and marketing concerns. To write a yeah. book you can't sell is, this, is equivalent to a company creating a product they can't sell. Right. Where, you, you know, yeah, because you, your book is the product. Ford isn't going to make a car that they don't think they can sell. They're going to know how they're going to sell it before they make it. That's, right. That goes into the whole thing. So there was a way to sell Caitlin Strong. As the, as, the, as the female Jack Reacher, the female justified. You know, yeah. that, that kind of Western, modern day Western, with a female gunfighter. Mm -hmm. Because here's the thing, all thrillers are basically Westerns. Not mysteries, but all thrillers structurally resemble the Old West, where okay, the hero yeah. rides into town to take on the bad guys and save the innocent people, normally who are somehow involving his family, mm -hmm. something that's close and, and, and directly important to him as well. Mm -hmm. So I've taken the Western form and basically just updated it. No Country for Old Men would be the perfect example yeah. of a modern day Western thriller. Mm -hmm. You know, and there are others. Jack Reacher series, which is one of the great books by Lee Child. Yeah. Those are Westerns. They are mm -hmm. pure Westerns, except Reacher travels by bus, not by horse. Yeah. And was it a challenge for you to write a female protagonist? Did you have to do a lot of research or did it come you know, naturally? You know what? I don't write what I know. I oh, write okay. what I imagine. I'm not a serial killer. I've written about them. I'm not a Palestinian. I had a Palestinian hero for seven books. I've never been in the army. I've never trained. But my most successful series of books was where my, is my Blaine McCracken series, where he's, you know, Green Beret from the Vietnam era before we even knew what special forces meant. Right. You know, I've never been any of those things. Mm. Getting into the head of a woman is creating a character and letting her determine what happens. If you impose your will, then that if you, you then the, you are taking the character over instead of letting the character grow organically. In the case of Caitlin, my favorite part of the book is switching the paradigm, the series. Mm -hmm. Switch the paradigm where the female is playing the traditional male role. But right. the other thing that makes this the book so special to me mm -hmm. and readers, I hope is the push and pull in the sense that, on the one hand, Caitlin is a fifth generation Texas Ranger mm -hmm. who has this reputation throughout Texas as the modern day gunfighter who everyone's scared of even though she's a woman. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, she's practically raising the teenage boys of her, of her former outlaw boyfriend, Court Wesley right. Masters. So she does these incredibly maternal and, and familial things. At the yeah. same time, now, actually, in, in one of the books, it opens with her taking Dylan, Court Wesley's oldest son, to visit colleges. Mm -hmm. Of course, a gunfight breaks out. Yeah. But she's not the target. Dylan is. So that's what I meant about marrying the emotional core of the story mm -hmm. with the structural core of the story. And, I, and it's very important that Caitlin always is trying to protect the people she loves. Right. And but she and it can makes readers identify But like with all her. great heroes, she can never settle down. Yeah. You know, <laughs> if you've noticed what what do all great westerns have in common? The hero never stays. He always walks off yeah. or rides off into the sunset mm -hmm. to the next battle, to mm -hmm. the next gunfight. And right. that's that's Caitlin Strong. Yeah. So, I feel like Thriller Fest really sets out to help writers. Do you think, how important do you think it is to sort of give back and have established authors help uh, that, aspiring that, that authors? That is a wonderful question and it's a very easy one for me to answer. When I got involved with ITW, I hadn't done a book in four years mm -hmm. um, and I desperately needed help, not finishing the book, but helping to market it. I needed blurbs right? Okay. and I needed to reestablish my name in the marketplace mm -hmm. and um, I didn't know anybody. Long story short. Ten of the top members of ITW blurbed that book. Not one turned me down. Oh, they wow. all did it. And the thing about that is, I, my attitude is, they did it for me. So uh -huh. when people come and ask now me for the same thing, I never right. turn them down. So it's a matter of paying it forward as well mm -hmm. as paying it back. What they right. did for me, I'm doing for others. So. It's also a community. 
I'd never yeah. been part of an organization like this before, and now there's some of my closest friends in the world. Mm -hmm. Thriller Fest is my vacation. It's not where you go, it's who you're with. Yeah. And these are yeah. my favorite people to be around in the world. We don't get a, we don't, we're, not a, we're not together a lot. This is right. basically it. We're all together. And we have our traditions. It's like summer camp for writers. Mm -hmm. You know, just like, oh, visit, you know, it's like, it's like getting the first day of camp. And I was a you know, when everybody's coming back and you haven't seen them in a year, what's going on, what's this? And, you know, you, 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 the ups and the downs of their lives when someone's sick, when someone's not, you know, you know having mm -hmm. issues or problems. It's a place to gather where you're not judged. You know, yeah. you don't, and you all understand each other. Yes, exactly. And um, I've never seen a group of professionals at the level of IT of, of these people. Mm -hmm. The Lee Childs, the Steve Berries, the David Morells, the Sandra Browns, the Nelson DeMills, as giving as they are. I'm leaving names out, but it's it, you know just yeah. go to our website. You'll, it's not hard to figure out right. who these people are. They aren't just among the best writers I've ever known and who I all, and I read them all, they're also among the best people. Yeah. And um, it's inspiring to want to do, to become as successful as they are. At mm -hmm. the same time, there, there are far more authors who would like to be as successful as I am. Yeah. We always look up. We right. don't look down. Right. But here, the, what we try to do at ITW is for the haves to help the not yet haves or the not yet have enoughs. And I think this is especially crucial as this industry, the publishing industry, mm -hmm. continues to redefine itself. Yeah. Coming yeah, I mean, in the 10 years that Thriller Fest, so much has changed. No such thing as an e-book 10 years ago. Yeah. Um, we had our debut author breakfast earlier today. Mm -hmm. um, of, I think 10 of the publishers didn't exist 10 years ago. Wow. So the book business survived the, the cataclysmic sh paradigm shift. Mm -hmm. It made it out. And now print sales are rising again. Yeah. So we have to take advantage of that, and it's and it's a wonderful thing. And we were there for each other when things were looking very dire. Mm -hmm. we I didn't know, know people were really afraid. We didn't know three or four years ago if there would be print books left at this time, or at least yeah. hardcovers. Now, things are gone and they're never coming back. Mm -hmm. Mass market, which was always my way of selling books, paperbacks. Mm -hmm. The rack size. That was my, that's still my niche. Mm -hmm. But it's going away. It's, it's dealt a terrible blow to me. But I have to compensate yeah. and I have right. to do other things and find other ways to succeed. You can't sit back and complain and wish it was the way it was before. You right. have to take it the way it is and you have to act upon it. Being a writer means being a professional. You're running a business, you're a brand, and you don't give up and crawl into a corner. You look for other ways to succeed if some of the other outlets that you used to rely on are no longer there. And this is not just me, I mean, up to a certain level, we all are facing this. You know, it means writing more books, it means writing better books, it means changing your expectations, which is fine, I'll change my expectations, and I'll look for ever ave other avenues to, to meet the expectations I continue to have, which is to become a bigger and more successful author than I am now. Right, wow. Thank you so much for talking with us. It's always my favorite interview of the year, oh. <laughs> and, I, and especially because of the background. Yeah, yeah. <laughs>